In the early morning hours of November 11, 1918, the German command was forced to sign a surrender in the train car. Thus, the First World War ended. The world was confident that peace would now come. The phrase, the war to end all wars, was the hope of every human who wanted to make this formula a reality. However, while the US rejoiced the end of the war, Germany met this closing in ruins. The Paris Peace Conference began in January 1919. The British delegation at Versailles described the idea of US President Woodrow Wilson to create a League of Nations aimed at ensuring collective security promoting disarmament and international cooperation. Nevertheless, the leaders faced many challenges along the way, and war-torn Russia was increasingly subjected to the Bolshevik power of the Communist Party. Meanwhile, a conflict between the Ottoman Empire and Greece had erupted. Greece had been given part of the Ottoman Empire by peace treaty, which was not entirely to the satisfaction of the Ottomans. Allied forces, however, stood along the Rhine until the summer of 1919. Their bridgeheads have taken root deep into the defeated, disarmed, and starved Germany. This country was considered the main culprit of the disaster because it was Germany that led the reprehensible forces. Finally, having received peace and security, the French people chanted, never again. However, a mysterious anxiety still hung over the skies of France. The population of France was considerably smaller than that of Germany, by two-thirds. Moreover, the number of Germans was constantly growing, and this could lead to a difference of two times in ten years. France expressed outrage at the death of 1.5 million Frenchmen who had died defending the country from the enemy. The leadership recalled Bismarck's threats of a new war of 1875 and the Tangier Crisis, which forced the French foreign minister to resign and the last straw for him was the death of his son on the front during the First World War, as a result of which he left politics definitively. Supreme Allied Commander Marshal Ferdinand Foch insisted that France's borders should be extended along the precipitous Rhine. The river should become a barrier and shield under which the French could live in peace. However, British and American politicians believed that the inclusion of German territories in France would be contrary to the 14 points and principles on which the peace treaty was to be based. The Allies opposed the demands of Foch and France. They obtained the support of the French President of the Council of Ministers, Georges Clemenceau, in exchange for the Anglo-American guarantees of France's defense, the demilitarized zone, and the complete and continued disarmament of Germany. Germany lost all its colonies, which brought it wheat, potatoes, coal, ores, and other minerals. In addition, it was disarmed and had the right to have the army of no more than 100,000 people with a long service life, which did not allow accumulating reserves and recruit. Germany had to give 5,000 pieces of artillery, 1,700 aircraft, all its submarines. Despite Foch's protests, Clemenceau agreed. U.S. President Woodrow Wilson, British Prime Minister Lloyd George, and Georges Clemenceau signed a treaty of guarantee. After all these trials, Marshal Foch commented on the signature of the Treaty of Versailles with incredible precision. This is not a peace, but a 20-year truce. Despite everything, the French leadership, led by Prime Minister Raymond Poincaré, wanted to create an independent German state under the control and protection of France. However, it also had no chance of success. Over time, it even reached the point where Franco-Belgian troops invaded the Ruhr region in 1923 and captured important resource fields. This caused outrage not only among the Germans, but also among the Allies. The French occupation of parts of the German lands created a dispute between Lloyd George and Poincaré. However, under pressure from the United States and Britain, the troops had to withdraw the following year. Although World War II officially began in 1939, it was the consequence of a series of local conflicts that were unfolding in Europe. The complete collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire after the Treaty of Saint-Germain and the Treaty of Trianon was a real European tragedy. For centuries, this heir to the Holy Roman Empire has enabled many peoples to live side by side and enjoy the benefits of cooperative trade and security. 
Without it, no people would have been able to resist the pressure of a reborn Germany. Austria lost the status of an empire, Hungary, 75% of the territory and 3 million inhabitants. In addition, the allied Bulgaria also lost the territory and 1 million population. The League of Nations suffered a severe blow from the United States when the Republicans took power in the elections of 1920. The new leadership abandoned the course set by President Wilson and took a more isolated position. America's new view was that the countries beyond the Atlantic needed to resolve their own conflicts, as well as pay their debts. The situation on the mainland was aggravated by the complete victory of the communist regime in the former Russian Empire. A month after the beginning of the Paris Conference, war broke out between Poland and communist Russia. Active hostilities started a year later, when Poles were supported by the Ukrainian People's Republic against communist Russia. The Red Army wanted to get through Poland to Germany and spread the socialist revolution around the world. Germany and Italy almost fell victim to communist designs and propaganda. In this war, there was the last global cavalry battle in history. About 20,000 cavalry died then. Total losses were about 120,000 killed and even more injured. After a time, the initiative on the front went to the side of Poland. So, the first leader of the USSR, Lenin, decided to go to peace, and in March 1921, the party signed the Treaty of Riga. Latvia gained independence. Ukraine and Belarus became parts of the USSR. The following year, the final victory of the Bolsheviks ended the civil war in the USSR, which cost about 7 million lives, four times more than the losses during the First World War on the part of the Russian Empire. Communism was still partly spread around the world. China began to form its own communist party, and Hungary was temporarily placed under communist dictator Bela Kun. At the 1921 Washington Conference, the Allies made a proposal for maritime disarmament. As a result, England and the United States began to sink their battleships and destroy military bases. Such a strange decision was made in view of the thesis that not only the losers, but also the winners, must give up weapons. Because of this, France was condemned because it maintained its army on the basis of universal conscription. The US-UK relationship was not simple. Their cooperation was hampered by the British-Japanese alliance. Eventually, it was annulled. Japan got an unpleasant impression. The British and Western states actually gave it a political slap in the face. This was the first missing link for keeping the peace. Gefreiter Adolf Hitler stirred up the soldiers' hatred for the communists and Jews in whom he saw guilt for the defeat of Germany. Meanwhile, his future ally Benito Mussolini proposed to Italy a new form of government that would save the Italian people from communism and also would ensure Mussolini's dictatorship. At the same time, the Greco-Turkish War ended with a complete victory for the Ottomans, led by Mustafa Ataturk, who proclaimed the Republic of Turkey the following year and became its first president. The United States provided funding throughout Europe, including Germany. In response, however, reparations were demanded, and Germany remained under constant monitoring. The only consequence of such actions was a sense of enmity. Germany could make reparations only from new loans from the United States, which received about 2 billion pounds, 1.5 pounds from the United States, and about 500 million pounds from British depositors gave Germany the opportunity to quickly eliminate the destruction. As a result of loans in the late 1920s, the US received only a fifth part of what it allocated. And then began a series of unfortunate coincidences, the consequences of greed and imperial ambitions. It was started by hyperinflation in Germany. While before the war, the US dollar was worth 4, 4.2 Deutschmark. In mid-June 1923, it was 100,000. And in November, it was 4.2 trillion. A kilogram loaf of bread cost 680 million Deutschmarks. 100 trillion Deutschmark notes were issued. Adolf Hitler took advantage of the situation, who began the so-called Beer Hall Putsch together with his allies in Munich. 
Hitler fired at the ceiling of the bar and began shouting that he would form a new government under his command. The rebels managed to take Munich City Council members hostage, capture the telegraph and telephone lines, but the Bavarians had already reported a rebellion in Berlin. The putsch ended with the arrest of the leaders, and 14 putschists were killed by the police. However, the future dictator declared himself and was loved by the public. Hitler was sentenced to five years, which his supporters considered too harsh a sentence. As a result, he spent less than a year behind bars, continuing his activities all the time. There, the future dictator began writing Mein Kampf. In 1925, President Friedrich Ebert died, and the second and last German Reich President Paul von Hindenburg came to power. Hyperinflation has not only affected the Deutsche Mark, the American dollar also survived its fall during the Great Depression. Because of its position after World War I, the United States was able to set a course for significant economic growth, and the 1920s were a period of social flourishing. The development of clubs, jazz, mafia, and manufacturing. However, investment in production was much greater than was really necessary. The so-called stock market bubble burst, leading to the bankruptcy of many businesses and the unpaid loans. After all, the countries that received credit, including Germany, could not repay their debts. The Soviet Union created an artificial mass famine in occupied Ukraine and began genocide to suppress the revolutionary sentiments and national identity of Ukrainians. The criminal authorities confiscated all crops of grain and other food from the villagers. The League of Nations, because of Hitler's regime in Germany, did not want to clash with Moscow, so did not intervene. Only in November 2023, the World Congress of Holodomor Genocide Researchers of Ukrainians was able to establish a correct figure of 10.5 million Ukrainians. On the other side of the world in the Pacific Ocean, the political unrest was happening as well. Japan had a claim to Chinese Manchuria since the early 20th century when it won the Russo-Japanese War. The Russian Empire could have won if it had more time and troops, but Emperor Nicholas II decided to sign the peace, although the exact reasons for the decision are disputed. In 1933, Japan refused to return Manchuria to China, stating that it was absolutely impossible. The Land of the Rising Sun planned to expand its territory and subsequently launched the Sino-Japanese War, which would continue until the end of World War II. Moreover, the Japanese Empire withdrew from the League of Nations, thus refusing to enhance collective security. Japan's occupation of territories in Manchuria showed that the consequences of violating the rules of the League of Nations were minimal. Soon after ignoring the Manchurian conflict, the League of Nations almost completely ignored the Abyssinia crisis. Relations between Ethiopia and Italy have escalated, and as a result, there have been held several provocations against each country. The League of Nations voted for economic sanctions for Italy, but they were not fully implemented, so they became virtually meaningless. Britain and France even offered to give Italy two-thirds of Ethiopia, but even this did not suit the dictatorship. Italy withdrew from the League and eventually annexed and occupied Abyssinia two years later after winning the Second Italy-Ethiopian War. During the war, civilians became targets of Italian artillery and aviation. Italy used poison gas, although Mussolini denied using gas against civilians. The destruction of civilians became the norm for Italians. The ruler of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie I, left the country and came to Europe. He gave a rebuke to the League of Nations. It is us today, he told the League. It will be you tomorrow. Haile Selassie would eventually return solemnly to the country's capital during World War II. But officially, the conflict with Italy would end only two years after the conclusion of World War II. So far, Europe has only watched. While Italy was expanding its lands in Ethiopia, riots broke out in neighboring Spain. In 1936, Spain was shocked by the civil war between Republicans and Nationalists, which will last until the outbreak of World War II. The reasons are the same. The desire of the leading politicians to impose fascism and communism, 
the rise in prices for food, the export of capital by the authorities, unemployment. After the death of the first leader of the rebels, they were led by the future dictator Francisco Franco. The Communist Party of Spain grew from 20,000 to 300,000 people. The nationalists were helped by Italy and the Third Reich, the Republicans by the USSR. Within three years, the rebels managed to capture the entire country. The Soviet Union eventually stopped supporting the Republicans. But Franco, on a religious note, worsened relations with Germany and Italy, as a result of which he invited the German legion Condor to return home. The civil war resulted in at least half a million dead on both sides and 450,000 refugees. Franco told the Spanish that the war was over, but those were only his own words. Even before the attack on Ethiopia, the Third Reich tried to organize Anschluss with Austria. The United Kingdom and France shrugged their shoulders, although Benito Mussolini reacted sharply and mobilized four divisions to come to Austria's aid. Hitler did not yet have his feet on the ground to wage war against Italy, so he did not send troops to Austria, and without the Reich's support, the coup failed. Only Italy's conflict with Ethiopia has united the dictators. In the spring of 1938, during the Spanish War, the Third Reich initiated the Anschluss, annexation of Austria, despite the Geneva Protocol, which prohibited even economic unification with Austria. This time, after negotiations and ultimatums, Hitler ordered the troops to launch Operation Otto and occupy Austria. Moreover, he had personally left for Vienna after seeing tank failure in traffic. As a result, the dictator ordered his war machine to be reinforced, which will also play a role in the future. The world's reaction to the occupation of Austria did not take place. Countries have begun to prepare their population, industry, and economy for a new war. The world has begun to understand what modern warfare is. Power was seized by Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, and the imperialist tendencies of the Japanese Emperor Hirohito became clear. Already in October 1938, the Reich occupies the Sudetenland, and the next year, after the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, the Third Reich and the USSR will attack Poland officially starting World War II, a war that will change everything. The dictators Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini did not live to see it through. President Franklin Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain died during the war, and Chamberlain's successor Winston Churchill resigned. The world learned what nuclear bombing is. The League of Nations self-destructed, and the United Nations appeared instead. The Second World War profoundly changed the world and left scars on it that still reminded of itself. It was only after that the slogan, Never Again, really stayed in people's hearts.